Thank you for letting me talk about CSS at a React meetup. <laughs> uh, who of you knows CSS well and likes it? <laughs> I know. So who likes CSS? Me. Like CSS. Yeah. Who who thinks it's really sucky? Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, so CSS is a styling language for most of us, but it's not just used to make things pretty and to make thing a headline green and to move things from A to B. It can be a little bit more. You can actually draw with it, which might sound really weird and really useless, but I'm going to show you why this is super cool and what you can actually learn from doing something outrageous and really weird. So who am I? I'm. Thank you for Patrick for introducing me already. I'm, <laughs> I'm a software engineer and UI lead at Chillbill, and I'm what I refer to as a coding artist. So what does that mean? I misuse and abuse technologies uh, to build very weird things. And I'm going to show you uh, an example of what that is and what that means. And yeah, so let's get started. Um, I first started programming and I thought it was, la uh, it was magic. Because the first uh, function that I built, I felt like I, I had created life. I, I built a function that did nothing but uh, display the first 10 digits of the Fibonacci sequence. So I felt like God because something was showing that wasn't there before. Uh, when we start our programming, we feel this awesome feeling of creating magic, of doing something really, really cool and unique. This gets lost during our day-to-day -day work. When we start becoming real developers with issue trackers and features and pull requests, and everything becomes the same. And to not lose this feeling of magic, we have to look a little bit outside the box. Because once we know our chosen language really well, we start to kind of work the same things and do things the same way over and over again. So what we can do is try and think a little bit differently, do something that's that might seem outrageous, that might seem really useless, and try out something new. And that's what we're going to do, because the way we're going to do today. Uh, because as developers, we, we are above all things creators. And we shouldn't forget that. And this is our main aim as developers. So yeah, let's do something fun and let's draw something. OK, with CSS, we have one tool, actually, which is shapes. And for shapes, we have one thing, that's a rectangle. It's the only shape we can make with CSS. But we can manipulate the thing. We can make a long rectangle. What we can also do, whoops. It's really difficult to go to talk. <laughs> <laughs> we can make circles. We can also do other things with it. Art. Like this. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> looks a little bit like a head. I will show you that this looks a little bit like a head. You will see at the end. So this is the one shape we can do. We can manipulate rect rectangles. OK, whoops. We can also do triangles. So I lied to you, we can also do triangles. But actually, triangles are a rectangle in disguise because uh, triangles are really hard to make with CSS because they are very unintuitive. We can't just write triangle. We have to do a very weird thing where we define the borders of a rectangle that has no width and no height. So that's super weird. I'm going to show you how to make triangles. So I agree with the people who say that CSS might be a bit sucky, because this is how you make a triangle. <laughs> yeah, well, it's clunky, I know, but yeah. So how can we use this in real life? And do we use this in real life? Yes, we can, because if you think about tooltips, they have little, uh, little triangles on top. We can create them with that. We don't have to use images or SVGs for that. So that's a useful skill. So if we combine what we just learned with shapes, we can make a head. I promise this really is a head. This is, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm going to show you why this is a head. Because 
yeah, it, it looks weird now. It's going to be better later, I promise. OK, the next super cool thing and my favorite of all are pseudo elements. Pseudo elements are things like first word and nth child. But my favorite ones are before and after. Because every single HTML element is actually three elements in disguise. You only write one element in the markup, and you get two for free, which is super awesome, because short markup is good markup. Uh, so we define one thing, which is the pink box. And it has automatically, without us having to do anything, it has an element that's right before and an element that's right after it. So we can utilize that for drawing with CSS. And we can give our weird head eyes. So now we have created a head that has eyes with two HTML elements. It's the head is one element. It has two pseudo elements, which are the eyes. And then it has the weird thing, which, uh, spoiler alert, is a brain. <laughs> and the brain is a circle that has one pseudo element, which is the brain inside. So the next super cool and awesome thing is box shadow. Box shadow we use in real life too, which hopefully some of you have tried. It's a really cool thing. I will show you the syntax. So box shadow you can do outside of a thing and inside the element. And the syntax works like that. This is shadow to the right, shadow down. I'm going to leave this here. And blur. We don't need blur. And the insert one works just the same. Shadow to the right, shadow from the top. Let's make this bigger. And blur. We don't need that here. And he already looks like he's very drunk or slightly weird. <laughs> so once you combine all these things, you can go into infinity with it. You can basically create huge illustrations with just these three little skills or these three little properties. You can go all out crazy and add more stuff like gradients and whatever tickles your fancy. These are just the, some small little things. Uh, and if you want to add animations, that's super awesome too. And in the end, what you get if you just add on to this, something like that. <laughs> so I promise it's a head because it's a zombie. And yeah. So <laughs> thank you. So these are some of the things that I do when I'm bored. <laughs> uh, but what, what does it actually mean? What, what did we learn now? Well, why do I do this? Why? Well, why not? <laughs> because it's fun and because I love it and I learn a lot. And it has some benefits because, as I said, it's a lot of fun. It, it's, I, I kind of relax doing that. I learn a lot of things because I learned a ton of new properties. When I started doing this, I had no idea about the syntax of box shadow. I just copied, I, I went to uh, cssboxshadow.com or something like that and copied out the box shadow. But now that I know the syntax because I'm using it a lot, I can just write my own box shadow, which saves me a lot of time and useless uh, CSS. And also I learned animations because I once made a windmill and I wanted the windmill to turn. So I had to look up how to make something turn around the middle, which uses transform origin. So I learned two things with only one little problem to solve. And what's awesome about this whole CSS art thing is that there is a huge community emerging from it. Uh, if you know CodePen, who knows CodePen? Yeah, so you know, it's, it's a super <laughs> awesome platform where you can post your code and use it as a gallery for things you have created. And people are now starting to build these things, these weird CSS animations and illustrations with just code. And uh, something cool comes out of it because people share their knowledge and make each other better developers. Because if you look at other people's code, you can see, oh, I can do that too, but maybe I can do it with a few uh, bits less markup. That's also one thing. You start using a lot less markup if you try out something like that, because you, you want to challenge yourself. You're like, OK, I'm, I'm using 10 elements for that. Can I make it five? And then can I make it three? And at some point, can I make it one? 
And that's the real challenge behind that. And that transforms into your day-to-day -day life as a developer. Because at some point, you're like, I don't need a second element. I can just use a pseudo element for that. That saves you markup. That makes code uh, better readable and a little bit more accessible. So you actually learn useful things by doing weird stuff. So is it actually useful for production? No, please don't. <laughs> uh, what are SVGs? SVGs are scalable vector graphics. You create those in a vector program like uh, Adobe Illustrator. Maybe not Sketch. Please don't export uh, Sketch uh, SVGs because they are kind of tricky. Um, so for that, you need obviously the software, which costs money. But for production, SVGs are the better option because they are more accessible because you don't want to have 50 uh, HTML elements in, in your DOM that you don't actually need. So sometimes it might be nice to have CSS images for like little things that are only one element, because why not if you can do it? Um, I have created something like spinners or loading animations with CSS images, and that's nice. But if you can use SVGs, if you want to try out an experiment and do something weird, then use S uh, CSS images because it's fun. So I hope that was a little bit inspiring and I hope you had fun watching weird stuff <laughs> done with CSS and maybe you want to try it out. If you try it out, please tweet me. Uh, I hope you can see my, my Twitter thing. It's Eva underscore Trostlos. If you try something out, put it on CodePen and tweet it at me. I would love to see and go on and create. Thank you. They <laughs> sketch export some useless markup that you first have to clean out. If you use inline SVGs, yeah. you know, where you get the code and post it into your markup, uh, sketch put some useless markup oh, into yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. And you first have to clean that out. And Illustrator doesn't do that. Illustrator just gives you the plain yeah. uh, inline SVG. Cool, cool. But I could write a plugin for sketch that. Sure, you can. Okay. If you <laughs> Huh? Yeah. What is the tool? This is the tool that will clean, up, clean it up for you. Yeah. Cool. I need that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Check out the. I mean, the, it's it's set up on a React Vienna brand repository. So <laughs> ah, okay. And it's using something that I was showing. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's just. I have both, and, and for SVG exporting, I only use Illustrator. I also find it easier to use, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Come on. Uh, first off, thanks for your talk, Eva. Uh, I have two questions, actually, if I may. Yes. First off, um, I'm curious. How long, say, does a zombie take you to draw? Uh, if I already know what it's supposed to look like, it yeah. takes me half an hour to an hour. When I'm experimenting around with like, I don't know how to get it right and I don't know what I actually want to do, then it can take me up to a day. Because, yeah, I will change colors and, and the hands and whatever. I, I will just try it out, so. Cool. Uh, and my other question is, do you have a link that I could maybe follow your art in? Uh, if you follow me on, on Twitter, I will post all my code pens and you can follow me on code pen too. Cool, thanks. Pilar. <laughs> wait to try more of this stuff. Um, but I always wonder, what would you recommend is a good way for someone to get started? And by that I mean, like, mm -hmm. well, you don't have to <laughs> hold hands or teach CSS, but it's kind of like, OK, I know CSS. Ha, how do I start planning how to yeah. draw my unicorn or my keyboard <laughs> with wings? <laughs> well, there, there are now a couple of blog posts out under the, there is a medium blog called Coding, Coding Artist. Coding underscore artist, I think it is. Uh, I write for that for, for that medium thing too. And there is one that's called Get Started with Drawing CSS Images. Cool. And that would be a good way to start. It also has code pen examples that will actually guide you through the process. Awesome. 
So kind of like when you learn to draw. Yeah, draw this exactly. Blob yeah, blob this is how you make a, a rectangle. This is how you make a circle out of it. Yeah, stuff like that. Yes. You are expert in three compared three. <laughs> well, I'm very good at CSS. Uh, canvas is you can do so much more with Canvas. I think it would be a waste just to draw with Canvas because you can make interactions, you can make super cool JavaScript animations with it, you can make time functions and everything, and sound and all the cool things. So Canvas is a really, really powerful tool to create awesome stuff. And people actually bend it into infinity. So it's, it's a really cool thing. And there are coding artists who focus solely on uh, Canvas art. And I think that's really cool. It's also, it's more for the JavaScript people. And yeah, but it's, it's something to look into. And unfortunately, I'm not good enough to do what other people do, but I try around with, with Canvas and I find it a lot of fun. My, my domain with this kind of thing is CSS and SVGs. But Canvas can do a lot more than both of these. Uh, yes? Big fan of CSS uh, color gradient background. Do yeah. you use uh, also CSS gradients? Yes. Uh, yes, I love the them. The other question would be, do you recommend if it's a sophisticated pattern? to use it or better to use a, a tiny image? Uh, you mean uh, use an image or something created with just uh, well, the CSS, just gradient? Like 200 lines of hacky CSS. Gradient. If you want to do it, use the the gradient. Why not? If, if it's fun for you, why not? Uh, it has the benefit of people not being able to copy and paste your, your image, but yeah, it's a lot of work. If, if people don't know, you can use gradient to create basically everything. You can use one diff element and have a gradient and go pixel by pixel. People actually do that and write thousands of lines of gradient code. That's super weird. And, and I guess people like it, so why not? Um, if it's a small thing, then yes, I, I completely would. Just also, if, you, if you're learning gradients, uh, it's a good way to learn the syntax of gradients. So yeah, I think it's, it's, it's good for experimenting for production. Probably not so much. <laughs> yes? How did you get started into doing CSS and what makes you so passionate about it? It was probably the first web language, aside from HTML, that I really took a passion to because when I started with building websites, it was before style sheets. It was during the time when we had inline CSS only. So that's a long time ago. Uh, and CSS started to get popular around that time. And that's when I started learning it. And uh, because I was with the people who first started out doing that, I think that's why I'm so passionate about it because I learned all the things when they came out. And yeah, I think I just kept that. and. I, I don't think CSS is broken, but some people think uh, I, I just, it's my favorite front end language. So yeah, I just like it. <laughs> I don't know why, it's, it's a really weird thing. It's also, I know it's a bit weird to write and, and not very intuitive, but yeah, it's what you're used to and what you grow up with. And so that's why I like it. Maybe try one more question. Yes. Yeah. Do you have any opinion on this uh, CSS in JavaScript? So would you write your CSS in JavaScript? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've been suffering right. for, for my first month of React. I've been suffering with putting my CSS into the, the JavaScript. Uh, I got used to it now. Uh, it, it hurt a lot in, in the first month uh, because I grew up with first having inline CSS, which is really bad and then completely separating it. And now I have to put it back in. And that's, yeah, it, it's a bit weird for me. But I got over it. So yeah, it, it took some, some getting used to. Yes? Uh, I have a question. Uh, 
So like a follow-up question. So yes. you, you still think that Cascade and all this stuff mm -hmm. basically things that many people think are broken and CSS mm -hmm. are good? Or what like for rephrasing mm -hmm. what do you, do you think CSS is good for UI components? Because today we like you mm -hmm. know for let's say we there are websites mm -hmm. and there are like uh, very complex UIs for yeah. web applications. And if you still think CSS is a good fit for uh, I'm I'm very much for component based CSS. So only using the CSS for the thing that you actually need it for. I actually haven't looked into style components yet. But <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know I need but I, I'm I'm gonna hear his talk in Berlin so it, it's gonna be fine. Just <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell him. <laughs> it's it's on it's on record. No, <laughs> <laughs> I can't go to Berlin now. <laughs> okay. So, um, can you elaborate on this like, component CSS? What what do you mean by that? So, creating C like style guides. Like this is what a button looks like. This is what a table looks like. Make separate separate component files for this is a button CSS and only import the ones that you need. Thing. But you can't Does that make sense? That's like the yeah, no, that's 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 my my uh, React problem. Yeah. yeah. Let's chat about it. Yes. <laughs> no, but when I just build static websites, I don't need all the CSS files for every single yeah. site. So that's that's when I would make it more component based. But yeah. So one last question. No last question. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Eva. Thank you.